So would you help me welcome your pastor and mine, Dr. Rod Parsley. Hey, only, only the first daughter would be willing to accept doing the announcements on spring forward morning. Because y'all need some, I, I really was going to have tables of Red Bull and coffee set up in the foyers. Because bless Christians' hearts, if one thing gets knocked a little bit sideways like you lost an hour of sleep, or you could have gone to bed an hour earlier, right? right. It just tilts your whole. You'll be out. You be like out of sync all week long. Bless your heart, cause your little body missed an hour's sleep. Tell your body to hush. No, I didn't say clap. I said open your mouth. Tell your body, body, you are not in control. Tell your mind, stop wondering. When you wonder, you'll wander. Okay. Come on, focus in. Yes. You know the best way to focus in? Lift up both hands. Lift up your happy heart, your happy hands, and a happy praise. And take the next 21 seconds to lose your natural mind thanking God that you woke up this morning, that he started you on your way, that you're about to receive a life-changing, history-making word from God today. You are never, ever, 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 ever going to be the same. Never, 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 never. Now put a shout on it. Put a clap on it. Put a wave on it. Put a spin on it. Put a dance on it. This is your day. The atmosphere of expectancy. That's the breeding ground of your miracle. Somebody didn't show up today to see what God was going to do for somebody else. This is my day for my thing, from my God. And if you even halfway act like you might maybe not someday want to get yours, I'll climb up your back, jump off your shoulders, take my blessing and yours too. This ain't no time to be cute. This ain't no time to be pretty. This time to shout your extensions down. Somebody praise him for something he already did. Somebody shout because of what you know he's doing right now. He's healing you right now, delivering your family right now, getting out there in your future and preparing your tomorrow today. Somebody thank him. Now somebody thank him for the miracle you about to run into when you open your door at home. Hey, my great God. I said he's a great God. Ha ha. The Lord is your shepherd. You have no want. I dare you to dance and shout and clap that you have no want. You don't want anything but Jesus. When he becomes the answer to every prayer you will ever pray, you will have absolute victory. Victory in Jesus my Savior forever. You shout to him right out of your jacket. Oh, it's a good day. I said it's a good, 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 good day. Well, let's see. Let's see if you can shout about this. Over 600 souls born again in the last seven days. Oh, no, you ain't got any joy. 600. All of heaven loses it over one. We've seen 600 in the last seven days. Somebody ought to get a little. 
own. Let's see. Let's see. We're distributing another 160,000 pounds of fresh food from the parking lots today. That brings our total to, no, that's not our total. Try again. 2,415,000 pounds in 13 weeks. Seventy-three thousand twenty-five families have been served with a dollar value at wholesale three million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I know Congress wants to soak you for two trillion, so that number doesn't mean much to you. Isn't that an incredible, incredible thing? Give God a great hand. Of course, he couldn't have done it unless the local church team here, Miss Megan, Miss Lori, all of those that work so diligently, it wouldn't have been possible without people out there at 6 o'clock this morning unloading those trucks. Wouldn't be possible without folks distributing at 12 o'clock 140, 150,000 pounds more food. Somebody has to pick up. I don't know why you all don't look like Professor Sam's, you know. You're picking up all that, all that weight. But thank God for you. Turn around, give somebody a fist bump, and tell them, I love my church. Amen. Turn your Bible to the book of the Revelation. Remember, there is no such thing as revelations. There is a book, the closing book in your Bible, 21 chapters. I'm going to challenge you before we come to close today that you take the next 21 days, 21 days between now and resurrection morning. Hallelujah. 21 days to fast, to pray, to be in the Word. In fact, in a little bit, I'm going to give you a Bible plan so that we can all read the entire New Testament in the next 21 days. We will read gospel every day. We will read epistles every day. And we will read a chapter of the 21 chapters in the book of the Revelation every single day. And then we will pray and we will fast. I've got a brand new 21 day fast for you. A brand new book. In fact, mine is the ink still wet on it because I, I got a little behind getting it written, but here it is, 21-day resurrection fast, spirit, soul, and body. And inside these pages, I give you a prophetic word for every one of those 21 days. I give you specific scriptures for every one of those 21 days, whereby by the end of it, you will have read the entire New Testament in 21 days. Now, I'm going to make that part so easy for you that we have recorded the entire New Testament. We have put it downloadable with the specific scriptures for each day, the gospel, the epistle, the book of Revelation, and all you have to do is hit a button on your phone and you can not only read it, you can hear those passages for that day. We also divide the 21 days into three weeks, three seven-day periods. During the first one, we will fast and pray over things having to do with our physical man. Then we'll take the next seven days and we will focus on our mind, our will, and our emotions. Then that last week, heading into Good Friday, Silent Saturday, 
and Resurrection Sunday morning, we will be dealing with your spirit. We will fast things that will affect your spirit. We will read things that will affect your spirit. We will prophesy things that have to do with your spirit. We will pray that your spirit be renewed like that of an eagle. Now, for those of you online, it's all downloadable. That means you can click a button and the whole thing will come right to you. Well, I was supposed to talk about that a little later, but I decided to jump into it right then. Is that all right with somebody? Would you like to have your 21-day resurrection fast spirit, soul, and body book? They're $329.12. Do you still want one? All right. They're free, and we'll give every. They're free online. They're free in Elkhart. They're free here today, and we'll be sure to get them in your hands. We are not getting them in your hands right now because I would prefer you listen to me than peruse through this that I'm giving you for the next three weeks. Is that okay? Have you found the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John 20 miles off the coast of Ephesus on the island called Patmos with nothing but the wild beasts for company? Have you found it? It's the last book in your Bible. You don't have to go very far into it, just the second chapter. Now you understand that in that chapter, God Almighty is dealing with what's commonly referred to as the seven churches of Asia Minor. There were not seven different letters. There was one letter that was circulated among all seven churches all the way around the horn of Ephesus. But each church was spoken to with great specificity by the Holy Spirit through God's servant John. John boiled three times in oil and refused to die. John segregated, John separated, John silent, nothing there but the presence of God. And there God gave him the greatest revelation of Jesus Christ ever given to humanity. It is the book that you and I should be living in. And I know you're going to be blessed today because I'm going to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 5, and that Bible says, Blessed is he who hears it, and blessed is he who reads the sayings of this book. So are you ready to be blessed coming in and blessed going out and blessed in the basket and blessed in the field? Are you ready to be a blessing? You can't be a blessing unless you're blessed. I never understood how one local church is supposed to give away three and $3.7 million wholesale of fresh food to the community if that church is poor. Oh, you're not clapping now. I said, if that church is poor. How are you supposed to be a blessing to your neighbor if you happen to borrow sugar from your neighbor? You should be taking sugar to your neighbor. You should be taking the gospel to your neighbor. Oh, Father, I'll go to Africa. No, you won't. You won't go next door. But you're going next door today with a big box of groceries in each hand saying, I just came to be a blessing. My church made this possible. And we want you to know we love God and love people. I'm, you're not going to shout, so I'm going to go on. How would you like to have a revelation? What if, let's just ponder for a moment. What if I was able to give you something today that would produce a $10,000 miracle guaranteed? No, you wouldn't take it? Because I got a check made out for 10000 I was just looking for somebody who was willing to shout. But y'all sitting there looking at me in doubt and unbelief like God would never bless you. God could never bless you. If God gave you $10,000, you might backslide, buy a boat, not go to church on Sunday. Honey, you don't need preaching about God healing and blessing and prospering you. You need a salvation message because you need to get saved because all you doing take it up space. Now, 
And I'll tell you what else happened. What else has happened is we don't depend on God anymore because the media has convinced you that it's the government's responsibility to take care of you and your family and your food and your future and your health care and your house. Go ahead, become a slave on Uncle Sam's plantation if you want to. My Bible says to me that my God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Didn't say nothing about the federal government. Oh, you not shouting now. You trying to draw sides. There's only one side. You're not a Democrat. You're not a Republican. You're in the kingdom of God and of his Christ. And everything in this kingdom, you better hear this preacher today. Everything in this kingdom is diametrically opposed and mutually exclusive of everything in the kingdom you came out of. In this kingdom, you don't put your paw out to receive. You put your paw out to give. In this kingdom, you don't try to climb the ladder. The way up is down. God exalts the man who humbles himself. You're looking at me funny. Say, it is God's will to bless me. Okay, about a third of you believed it. Well, Brother Rod, money's evil. Well, then give me all yours. You won't have to worry about it. We quote these little chivalrous of tradition. We have no earthly idea what we're even saying. Money is evil. Well, if you're so evil, give it to me. I'll sanctify it and win souls with it. You're quiet. You're quiet. Look around here. One year ago today, was the first time in the history of America that we were banned from gathering together. You know why? You know, everything is prophetic. I didn't say pathetic, I said prophetic. Everything is prophetic. This whole thing was designed to shut the mouths of those who proclaim the gospel. It's not about nations. It's not about the Dow Jones industrials. It's about the kingdom of God and of his Christ. And they thought they'd shut me up with lawsuits and they failed. And they thought they'd shut me up with vocal cord cancer. And look at me preaching today. They thought they'd shut us up with, with COVID-19, and yet here we are, just as strong as ever, more blessed than ever, more powerful than ever, more mighty than ever, more effective than ever, more eff You can't destroy the Word of God. You can ban it, you can bury it in the borrowed tomb of Joseph, but by the third day, it'll resurrect itself and beat the pole bears back to the house. I, I, I wish I had somebody online shouting. I'm just getting warmed up. I dare you to say these prophetic words. Be it unto me according to your word. Do you mean that? Be it unto me according to your will. God, I wish I had three days. Well, what is his will? Well, bless your heart. Show him. Come over here, Professor Sams. Come over here. You know, show everybody at home what, what his will is. Do you see it right there? That's his will. If you'll come to Valor Christian College where world changes are made, this man would teach you from that book, and he'd get rid of your stinking thinking. He'd get rid of your defeated attitude. 
Jesus didn't die so you could be sick, broke, rejected, depressed, diseased, and damned. Jesus died to redeem you, to bring you back to the original state of affairs by paying the sacrificial price. And that's what he did, Pastor Sam's. He paid the price. It is paid in full. Now, if I want to know what his will is, all I have to do is turn in here. There's a book over here called 3rd John. It has a verse in it called verse 2. It says, it is God's will that you be in health and that you prosper even as your soul prospers. Are you with me? He was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised. <laughs> for your iniquities. And by his stripes, you are healed. So when are they healed? Now. When? When he did it, you're healed now. You're healed now. You were saved the moment the first red rivulet of crimson blood flowed down a naked side and dripped off his toe into a bloody pool on earth. You were saved that moment. Now you had to receive it, but the work was already done. I, I wish I had half a church. And if he saved you, he healed you. If he healed you, he'll bless you. If he blessed you, he'll prosper you. But somewhere or another along the line, you got to get in agreement with his will. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, God forever surrendered. I talk fast. Turn your listener up. God forever surrendered his right to act independently in your life when he said let us make a man in our image after our likeness let us give that man dominion in all the earth you can't find anywhere in the 1166 pages of your bible where god rescinded that law you say well yeah but Adam fell and Jesus resurrected. I thought I had at least three supposed believers get a little bit happy when I say Jesus resurrected. On the third day, the stone got rolled away, and an angel said, Mary, go and tell. The Son of God is risen. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive, and he's well. Fist bump somebody and say, he's alive. Be seated. You have to live like he's alive. Talk like he's alive. Believe like he's alive. Shout like he's alive. Praise like he's alive. Witness like he's alive. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. That's what I want you to look for. Revelation chapter 2, verse 5. Somebody shout, come on, Jesus. I want to see you. Jesus speaking to one of those seven churches. In fact, the headquarters of the whole business of that early apostolic uh, uh, multi-campus church. <laughs> and these young fellows still wet behind the ears thought they came up with that, you know. They had seven churches, all based out of Ephesus. But this is what they had that we don't have. They were all under apostolic authority. We don't understand that. We're all about formula, not faith. Jesus, speaking to that church at Ephesus, said for them to remember from whence they were fallen and to do their first works over again. Say, I might need to do something over again. Watch. 
or else. When did you ever hear a modern church sermon that talked about do this or else, God says? We've taken or else out of our vocabulary and we have the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Are you picking up what I'm dropping? Go do your first works over again. You can start with repenting. I promise you I could spend three minutes with any person under the sound of my voice. And before I was finished, they would find several things that needed to be repented of. And these lying preachers that want to tell you you only repent once are just what I said, liars. <laughs> Repenting is a changing of the mind, a redirection of the heart. I just have a bad case of can't help it today. Repent and do your first works over again, or else, shout it. You were pretty weak. If I was, if I was saying shout it, I'm blessed, you'd scream it. I dare you to shout out loud so everybody in your neighborhood can hear you. Put the cameras on all of them so their neighbors see them. Shout, or else. He is an or else God. I don't know where we found this other God. Jehovah is an or else God. Repent or else. Forgive or else. Go or else. Pray. Study to show yourself approved a workman unto God that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth or else you will be destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Give or else it will not be given to you. He's an or else God. All of the commandments of God are just that commands. They are not optional. They are not flexible. And God says, obey them and live. The problem is you drank the Kool-Aid. You believed a lie. You want religion to tell you that being poor is a virtue. Well, stop working. How much money for you is too much. Notice how we're being driven by political and media, quote, influencers, that the bad people are the rich people. They're the ones we need to come after. The rich people. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's expand unemployment benefits ad nauseum. Let's just tell folk, we will pay you until you're able to find a job. Well, that's intelligent. I see we're hiring signs 50 times a day. But ain't nobody wanting to go flop hamburgers at McDonald's when they can sit at home and, and watch Dirty Housewives and get a check in the mail from me. We're being trained to be poor. Somebody got to put their plate down push their dinner back 
in that tin foil pan warmed up in the oven, stomp your foot on your dirty kitchen floor till the dust come up because we're being trained to be lazy. We're being trained to be entitled. We're being trained that it's somebody else's fault. We're being trained there's somebody else to blame. Under God, stop it. Stop it. Don't talk to me about poverty. I was raised so far back in the woods, we had to pipe in sunshine. We used hoot owls for roosters. You want some more? I got more of these. June bugs didn't show up till August. Sun came up at 10 in the morning, went down at 3 in the afternoon because you couldn't see for the coal dust. My mother worked two jobs. My father worked two jobs. I watched my mother cut cardboard out and put in the bottom of her shoes to walk out of a rat-infested third-story apartment off Parsons Avenue in Columbus, Ohio and walk in the middle of the winter to her second job. Don't be talking to me about poverty. We were raised so poor we couldn't pay attention. But we planted, we weeded, we watered our own beans and taters in the summer and canned them for the winter and we didn't murder anybody because we were poor. We didn't rob, we didn't steal, we didn't cheat. I'm determined if there's anybody in the United States of America that wants to refuse a handout, it's the church of Jesus Christ. Look at you. You don't even know how to respond. I hate to quote the Bible to you. He that doesn't work doesn't eat. And anything else is falsehood. Well, who's going to take care of my Aunt Minnie when she's old? How about you? Well, I can barely keep my rent paid. That's the problem. Poverty is not a blessing. If you think it's a blessing, come and go with me to Sudan. Come and go with me to Haiti. Come and go with me to Mexico. Did you notice Ain't nobody from Texas flooding through the Mexican border into Mexico. Wonder why. I'm going to tell the truth. Look at me. Government has never, ever, ever been able to tax you enough to feed everybody. Well, I don't pay any taxes. Well, that's a problem. You're not supposed to be a consumer. You're supposed to be a contributor. I had no intention of going here. Feels pretty good, though. Excuse me while I make so much sense. Which you won't find on Fox News or CNN, either one. You will find the truth from Genesis to Revelation. And if you will live your life by that book, you cannot help but become the blessed of the Lord. Quit using poverty as an excuse for everything. You don't have to lie because you're in poverty. 
You don't have to cheat because you're in poverty. You don't have to steal because you're in poverty. You don't have to riot because you're in poverty. Pray. Get a hold of God's word. I got three people clapping. Jesus said, the poor you will have with you always. But he didn't say you had to be one of them. Well, I don't, I didn't have the right socioeconomic opportunity. Who did? Who did? I didn't. You think I'm bringing these students into Harvest Preparatory School? 92% of which are from the poorest neighborhoods in this city? You think I'm teaching them how to live off the government? No, sir. I'm telling them they can do anything they can dream. They can do anything they're willing to pay the price to get. They don't have to be bound by their past. God has a plan. Somebody said to me not long ago at a sporting event, a Caucasian person, they said, they said, we just think it's just, me patted me on the shoulder, we just think it's wonderful what you do for those children. I said, I don't do anything for those children, but give them an opportunity. I educate them three times better on one-third the money that the government takes from you to, to finance dilapidated buildings and teachers that refuse to work. You want the grocery attendant to work. You want the gas stations open. You want to take your vacations, but you don't want to teach my children? What is wrong with us? You want to ban Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss. We just have Dr. Seuss Day at Harvest Preparatory School. And all the students and all the teachers dressed up in Dr. Seuss gear. Because I want them to learn to read. I want them to learn to love books. Dr. Seuss was one of the greatest anti-racists and wrote more about it than any of his contemporaries. I work alone. Just kidding. Stop this stuff. Stop it. Stop being all wound up in that mess out there. You are born again, spirit-filled, Holy Ghost-filled, fire-baptized, walking, breathing, miracles of God on your way to heaven, and God does not want you living in hell to go to heaven. Erase what you want to. Hallelujah. Am I through the text? Jesus speaking to the church at Ephesus said for them to remember from whence they were fallen. I guess that's what I just went over with you. And repent. Shout, we repent. We repent of low living. We repent of sight walking. We repent of complaining. We repent. My God, oh, dear Lord, I don't know if I can make it. In the morning, we had to move the clocks back, and I lost an hour of sleep. My world has gone to hell. Come on, buck up, little buckaroo. 
Come on, you're made strong by reason of the prophecies which went before on you. You're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're the blessed of the Lord. Blessed coming in, blessed going out, blessed in the basket, blessed in the field. Your children are not a blight, they are a blessing. Repent, do your first works or else. I will come and remove your candlestick, energy, light, direction from its place. Place. If you got a pencil or you can highlight on your phone, circle. Wake up, Elkhart. Thank you. Circle the word place. Place. I like having a chair out here. I might keep this. This is comfortable. Comfortable. So, I don't, I don't care much for that shot. I don't know. They got me these pants. I'm trying to get used to them. I call them my Dr. Seuss pants. Your topos. You ready? Say, I have one. I have a topos. Look at your neighbor and just say, I got a topos. How about you? <laughs> Let me tell you what a topos is. It's a specific positioning by God of opportunity. God said, or else I'll remove your specific opportunity. How many of you'd like to have an ordained by God, sent by God, anointed by God, blessed by God opportunity? So if I said to you, I've got $10,000 for you. Stop, stop. How many of you would say, oh, sorry. Hallelujah. Could I have some bus fare to get home? Now, now wait. I'm making sense to you. Hold on. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a piano player. Hold on. If I handed you $10,000, jump up and scream if you'd say, thank you. <laughs> Stay standing and shouting and show me how you'd act if I gave you a check, which I could do for a hundred thousand dollars. How about, which I have done, if I wrote you a check for a million dollars, Wouldn't you join one of those cults that Rod Parsley and Kenneth Hagin and Kenneth Copeland and anybody that talks about the Bible saying that God wants to bless you as a cult leader and a false prophet? You wouldn't join those, that bunch? I bet you any one of them would accept a million dollar check from me. So who's the hypocrite? Get your nose out of that stuff and get your nose out of the internet and get your nose in the Bible. God didn't leave you an internet. He left you a Bible. He didn't leave you 9,000 TV channels. He left you a book. 
That's why I want students to love books, to love reading. Teach your children what it's like to have a book in their hand. Now, your Bible says, train up a child in the way it should go. And when it's old, it will not depart therefrom. 36 years ago, God spoke to me in this chair with a TV tray and my study material with me. God spoke to me. I can take you to the place on the third floor, the Hibernia Apartments on McNaughton Avenue at 270, where God spoke to me. And sometime I'll tell you what he said. He spoke to me. He gave me a revelation. I'm not ashamed to tell you, over the last 36 years, that one word turned into over a $100 million miracle. You're sitting in it. You're being lighted by it. You're watching through it. One word from God. One. A prophetic, apostolic, anointed. You know how I know it's anointed? Because it's liberating and life-giving and it breaks the yoke. Stand up, elders. Did it break the yoke? Yes or no? You were bankrupt. You were bankrupt. How long ago? 16 years ago, did you get the revelation that you know I'm talking about? Yes. You got it. Yes. You not only got it, you acted on yes. it. Yes. You began sowing. Yes. Resurrection seed. Yes. And are you bankrupt today? No. How's your business doing? Awesome. It's, it's doing better than it did even before COVID. It's doing better than before COVID. How much business will you do this year? Probably 10 or 12 million. 10 or 12 million from bankrupt. Oh, you clap if it was your 10 million. Be seated. Be seated. Now, when God gave me this vision 36 years ago, this word, this prophetic unction it got in everybody this has been my problem back in the beginning you know when we didn't have what that miracle has provided everybody participated everybody it was total absolute agreement my wife and I weren't married at the time. Joni went out and took a second job. She was a full-time student at Ohio State University. She was working a 40-hour job, and she went and got another 20-hour-a-week job, lived during, off of the 20-hour-a-week job so she could give an entire week's income from her 40-hour-a-week job. People had yard sales. People babysat. People sold things. People had yard sales. They refused not to have a resurrection seat. They refused. It got in everybody. It got in our children. It got in our children. I'll show you that it did. Run that little clip. We've got a little girl over here, Randy. Hi, Randy. How you doing, Randy? Will you stand up there? Stand her up there, Mom, Dad. This is Randy. How old are you, Randy? You're three years old. Did you bring your Easter offering today? You did? There it is. When she came in, she said, I, when we came in the door, she said, I'm sowing my seed today. I'm believing, she's three years old, she said, I'm believing for a color printer on my pewter. 
Well, how many of you believe she's going to get it? I said, how many of you believe she's going to get it? Amen. Amen. My daughter came in this morning. She looks so beautiful. I don't know if she'll stand up here for you or not. I don't know. Would you come stand by daddy? You wouldn't? I didn't think you would. I didn't think you would. You don't want a Macarena or anything for me? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. She, she came in this morning. She had a big glass piggy bank. She said, Daddy, I've been saving this since my birthday last year for resurrection offering. I didn't say a word to her, didn't, or my wife didn't say a word to her. She brought in that piggy bank, and she started trying to shake it out. And I said, well, baby, that's one of those piggy banks. You know, that's where the saying came from, you got to break the bank. And it, because it didn't have any outlet for that money to get back out, like some of you. Anyway, it, I'm sorry, I just lost my mind momentarily. <laughs> and I said, baby, you got to break this thing. So she called her papa, and her papa came over, and she broke the bank, and she's got her offering. How much is it? How much is it, Ashley? How much? $21.09 out of that piggy bank. She's going to sell her offering this morning. Praise the Lord. Well, how many of you are ready for no dry season? Are you blessed? Hmm? Do you have to pay for any of the degrees you have? Paying for the one you're working on next? Hmm. Pay rent? Have a mortgage payment? Own your own home? Debt free? Do you drive a hoopty? What do you drive? Audi. Audi. Yeah. Make a payment? Paid for. I didn't pay for any of it. Neither did you. Who'd you interview a week or so ago? Lee Isaac who? Chung? Lee Isaac Chung, who just won the Golden Globe for best foreign language film. You interviewed him. Got any more interviews lined up? A few. God will make you sit before kings. God will move you to the front of the line when you have no business being in the line and you know it. That young woman is one generation removed from abject poverty. One generation. Lyndon Baines Johnson didn't go to an inner city neighborhood in Chicago when he announced his war on poverty. He came and stood at the mouth of the holler, hollow to you, in Martin County, Kentucky, where my mother and father were raised to announce a national war on poverty in the 60s. There's more poverty multiplied over and over today than there was then. They want you poor. And if you let them, they will see to it. God 
needs somebody in this darkness to preach this gospel. Who do you think is easier to manipulate? The person living paycheck to paycheck or the person that doesn't need anything from you? The more you need from them, the more control they have over you. Break the chains. Break the cycle. My mother did. She looked at my dad and she said, you can live in this poverty hole if you want to. But I'm taking my babies and we're getting up out of here. We're, I don't care if I have to walk. We are getting out of this. I'm not putting my milk in the creek anymore. I've heard there's something called a refrigerator. One generation ago. You don't have to stay. You don't have to be there. And God raised up her son to plant 36 churches and win 50,000 people to Jesus in the largest Muslim population in the world. God raised up her son to build the biggest church complex north of the Mason-Dixon line and east of the Mississippi River by the time he's 29 years old. Stand up. No, I'm, I'm looking at someone in particular. Front line. Right there. One, two, three, fourth row. Stand up. There's nobody else in the front line on the fourth row. Stand up. Yvonne. Alice. Stand up, darling. Pastor loves you so much. You know that, don't you? Yeah. She runs and gives me a big hug. Her daddy plays up here too. I just saw God open a window. But it wasn't a window like I think of windows. It was a window on a computer. Windows. Windows. God's going to do something with your business online and you are going to be very, very blessed. You're going to be debt free. You're not going to owe anybody anything. But the blessing of God is upon you. I didn't prophesy to her. I prophesied through her. You might as well just get yours too. I believe for every one of you to own your own home. I believe for every one of you not to have a car payment. You can be seated. I got to quit. You want to know what God said to me? Do you want to know? How many of you already know? Well, I wrote it down for you because I don't want you to miss it. And, and Elkhart, under God, this is the year you get the revelation and the spirit of poverty and its overlording principalities in Elkhart County on the authority of God's word, I rebuke you. I wrote it down, Dr. Lowe. It's right here. Let me get to it. You know what? Did y'all make a screen out of it? Because I don't have my glasses. I'm very casual this morning. Is that okay? I could huff and hack and, and everybody shout and go home unchanged, or I could give you this. God said, every year, you celebrate 
Now, let me, let me set this age for you. I was sitting in this chair. I had a TV tray as my desk in a one-bedroom bachelor apartment. Uh, I was building this building. What pastor do you know that would drive a used car with a hole in the floorboard and sit in a one-bedroom, unfurnished apartment with a chair his parents gave him and a TV tray for a desk. No, you want to make $250,000 a year, drive a Bentley. You like to wear a big hat, but you ain't got no cattle. I preferred to have the cattle and then wear the hat. I was sitting here. And I was believing God because we needed to build an office building at the right road property. It was going, it would be the one, two, three, fourth building we built on that property. It was 1986 or 1987. It's written down in here. I just can't see it. Most of you weren't alive then. But my faith reached out to today so you could sit there in 1985. And I was reading, because I knew I had to receive an offering in the Sunday morning service, and I was reading in Malachi 3, which all good Baptists know, Malachi 3.10. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. Romans, or excuse me, Malachi 3.8. Will a man rob God? That's laughable. Will a man rob God? Yet, God said, you have robbed me. Now notice, the only thing you can take from God is the opportunity that he's giving you to benefit yourself and his kingdom. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't understand rob God. To rob God doesn't mean to take his money. It doesn't need your money. He needs you. He needs his kingdom in the earth. And the only way he can do that is through you because he bound himself to it in Genesis 1, 26, 27. You with me? Come on, track with me. I know it feels an hour later than it is. Take a deep breath. There you go. Get some oxygen in there. So we needed that $100,000. And you say, well, couldn't you have just gone to the bank and gotten it? <laughs> they begged me. We've never been in a position here where we had to try to convince a bank to give us something. They have called us for 43 years. Uh, don't you, wouldn't you like to have some money? Wouldn't you like to replace those pews that are 30 years old and carpet that's 30 years old? I sure would. But I'm not paying you extra for it. I'll just believe God. And that's what I said back there. I said, if we're going to get it, God's going to supply it. And God will give us that $100,000. And everybody laughed at me like they laughed at Noah. They, they laugh like it's a mocking dream. Well, that's just you. I know a whole lot of folks in my profession started when I did better preachers, better singers than me. They lasted about three years. I'm here 43 years. I'd like for what's on me to get on you. So, I said, we're, we're going to build this office building and we're going it was, like, it was like mine and Joni's home. We made the blueprints before we had a dollar. I had the blueprints for our home three years before we ever began to build it. Because I decided I ain't owing nobody. And a woman and her husband, half the nation away, heard me preaching 
by satellite, one of those great big satellites you used to have in people's yards. They heard me and got in a car and drove up here and said, God told us that if you could show us blueprints to the house that you're believing to build, we'll pay for it. I said, come on over. Come on over to my 980 square feet house and I'll show you the blueprints. Showed them the blueprints, they wrote the check, handed it to me, and went back where they came from. Oh, if somebody'd pay off your house today, you'd patty cake. Come on now. So, God spoke to me. Yet, he said, you have robbed me in tithe and offering. So God said to me, the offering is where you're missing it. Because I had tithed, which is not old covenant. Oh, that drew a shout from the crowd. And a hush fell over the crowd. Dear God, we mentioned tithing to the church staff the other day. I thought they were going to swallow their tongues. I was going to have to raise them from the dead. The biggest thieves and liars are not at Miller Kelton. They sit in church pews every Sunday and ask God for blessings while they deliberately disobey his word. They have no faith. Quiet. Did I miss a turn? Am I the first church of the frozen chosen today? Or am I? I want you to get this. I'm not interested in you thinking I'm a great preacher. I've been doing this a while. I'm interested in getting this truth in you. So that offering part hit me. Then I found out later in, in uh, Malachi 3 verse 4, which is very, very interesting. It says, then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant, pleasing to the Lord. Watch, as in the days of old, as in the former years. They had stopped celebrating the feast seasons of Jehovah God, where three commanded offerings a year were directed by God at Passover, Easter, Pentecost, 50 days later, and tabernacles at the end of the year. God said, three times in a year shall you come before me, Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times in a year shall you come before me, and when you come to celebrate the feast, do not come empty-handed. The children of Israel during Passover, the season we're in right now, gave 21 different offerings. Not their tithe. Offerings above their tithe. God said to me, 1985, every year you celebrate me giving my best, the sacrifice of my son, Jesus Christ. This one time every year, I want you to have the people celebrate that I gave my best on Calvary as a seed. Jesus was God's harvest in seed form. He is called the seed of God. A seed has to leave where it is. A seed has to be buried for a seed to bring forth and multiply the life that's already in it. 
Everything God's ever done, he's done with a seed. Everything God will ever do, he does with the power that's already resident in a seed. God's miracle is manifested by what he does when you obey. When you need a miracle, God does not give you the miracle. He gives you an instruction. The instruction that you choose to obey determines the future that you create. God said, I know the plan that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to bless you and not to curse you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You and your house shall be full, overflowing of wealth and riches. Well, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. You mean God wants everybody rich? Oh, I don't know about you. You have to decide for yourself. My God is not a poverty God. News reporter asked me one time, well, do you believe in a prosperity gospel? I said, I don't believe in a poverty one. What are you, what are you talking about? You mean to tell me once again, if I wrote you a check for a million dollars, you'd turn me down? So you don't really believe what you say, and you don't believe what you preach. How am I supposed to give away three and a half million dollars worth of food if we have no parking lot? If we have no pews? If we have no people? How much health is too much? How much salvation is too much? How forgiven? is too much that's just too much how much wealth is too much the same blood paid for it all when they shoved that crown of thorns and pierced his brow the curse was broken God said to that serpent, on your belly will you go eating the dust of the ground for the rest of your days. And he said to the, to the woman, to the serpent, he said, she's going to have a seed that will crush your head. And he said to the man, by the sweat of your brow, Shall you toil all the days of your life and bring forth thorns and thistles? I'm here to tell you when the blood flowed, the curse of poverty was broken. I'm going to get somebody to believe that somebody's going to step into a miracle. Somebody's going to step into a blessing. Somebody's going to look in your rearview mirror in six months and not even recognize yourself.